this is part three of the motherfucker principle truth and ego I'm gonna give you an example of one of the biggest hardest journeys that you will have to make and that is learning to appreciate and the second part which is more important than the first part act on the truth it's very hard because social narratives and other things can easily get in the way let me give you an example let's take Facebook video and at this current recording of this audio book Amazon has launched video I think respectively they'll do well on their platforms I do not think that they will dethrone or replace YouTube now this is why because I'm operating as a technician I do a lot of video I have 3,000 plus videos and growing and I operate from a position of truth I just left the gym and I was watching videos on Facebook and I was also watching videos on YouTube YouTube I go to YouTube to learn how to do something or I go to YouTube for a better production experience and I go to YouTube because you can search these things they're not on Facebook yet and the search on Facebook is horrible and I don't know what Amazon's gonna do but with that experience once again operating and appreciating from a posture of truth I'm on the bench doing bench press and my Facebook video starts playing now this is something I've noticed for months that many of Facebook views are not real views meaning that someone sat down and consumed the video that is a problem if you're on this side of the camera meaning you're putting up videos you want your videos to have reach that is a problem if you are a Facebook stockholder this is a win see it's not a bad you know or good thing it's just what it is and appreciating the truth Facebook was started by someone who stole the ideal from someone else that is the inception of Facebook so anything that pushes legality or pushes right or wrong it doesn't matter because the way that Facebook came into be was from a gangster move by Zuckerberg you know that people get caught up in the details and in the lawsuit and he had to pay all this money you know it was well worth it but the thing is he stole the idea and understand how you start is how you will end when I was putting out video about storage auctions I told the truth I knew storage auctions were hard they were brutal it wasn't easy money it was good money it was incredible money sometimes but it wasn't easy money and many people told me Glendon don't tell them how hard it is and I was like no I'm not gonna set someone up like that well here it is eight years later and there are many people who started on my journey with me of being an internet marketer a digital marketer and they're still here because I operated from a posture of truth and I didn't try to you know get over on people now this is the thing that you have to understand and this is motherfucker principle number three ego and truth often your ego will not let will not let you or will not acknowledge the truth and this can be a detriment to you I mean a serious detriment because when you don't operate from a posture of truth and you know, truth let's use math math as a posture of truth one plus one equals two one plus one equals two here five plus five equals ten in Italy uh, ten plus ten equals twenty in Africa twenty plus twenty equals forty in outer space no matter what perspective no matter where you are 
how you do it is a common elemental truth. Now, many people think that math is the only thing like that. There are many personal instances. There are things that are just as black and white, but ego would not allow you to accept it. Now, one of the reasons that I've gone very heavy on video and audio, and this all comes into the motherfucker principle number three. I have to keep reminding you. I can write well, but it takes me five or six times longer to write content because I'm dyslexic and I have some other issues. But I can do a video, and I can do video training, which would be better from a learning standpoint, faster than most people can write. So accepting this truth about myself and my deficiencies and blind spots, I can now actually put out more content, be more on point. But if I let my ego get in the way, I would still be sitting there writing all day, putting out this content, you know, probably would be better and faster as a writer at this juncture, but I would still be behind my grand plan. See, when your ego comes in, uh, if you're on the email list, maybe you saw this, where someone was talking about there were grammatical errors on my scheduling page for my consults. I hadn't looked at it in about a week or two and it's gonna be updated soon. Maybe, maybe not. But that page has made me $20,000 this month. So operating from the truth, do I go freak out and go, oh, I need to change this? Or do I need to continue to advertise that page and serve people who want my services? See, this is another truth. There are a group of people in your life who will tell you bad things about yourself because they love you and they want you to be better. There's a group of people like that, and that group is like that fucking little. It's that's it's my it's small. It's small. Most people who are telling you something bad about yourself is for a internal ego boost on their side. Here's some examples. If someone has an issue with you or they see something wrong, they'll like text you or hit you on the DM, like, hey, you know, you need to clean this up. Because they care and they want you to be better. Someone who does it on your Facebook page, YouTube comments, somewhere where it can be commonly broadcasted, they're not trying to help you, they're trying to get attention. Because one of the facts of leadership is if you have someone in your chain of leadership and you need to correct that person, the best way to correct this person is to pull them in your office, shut the door, and lay out the news. It still would not be pleasantly accepted, but you're dealing with the person and the problem. If you go ahead and correct this person out in the workforce or in the cubes or wherever you are where a bunch of people see this correction and sometimes that need, it is needed most times it's not then now you have two problems or three well one that person's embarrassed and they still have the problem two everyone else is like shit if I fuck up it they're gonna treat me like that so you've got more problems you've created two additional problems in the effort of trying to solve one this is when you let your ego go in your pocket and when you really look at it. Now, with that said, you know, using my first examples, if I were to do Facebook video heavy, if I was to do Amazon video heavy, it would be only because I know it's in my best interest. Right now, I think neither one of those platforms are in my best interest based upon my plans for my companies. It could be great for someone else, but once again, operating on truth, putting the ego to the side and really looking at it. Because the biggest person, the most important person that you will have to employ the motherfucker principles on is you. You gotta get out of your own way. Years ago, I was listening to The Power Within by Tony Robbins because when self-help was really booming mainstream, self-help has always been around. Uh, Earl Nightingale, self-help. Uh, Norman Vincent Peale, self-help. But it was commonly embraced. Well, I went ahead and was listening to it and there was this one task in there where, you know, Tony, you know, I had audio cassettes. Tony tells you stand up and take your hand and reach back as far as you can and mentally mark the spot on the wall. 
So I did it. Then, you know, he said, pause the cassette, which I did. Then I go back and he says, now see yourself going further mentally and do it again. So I went ahead and I did that and I went much further. We automatically limit ourselves to protect ourselves. We don't go as far as we can because we feel that we may be hurt, we may be injured, when most of the time that's not true. Most of the limitations that we place in our lives are self-induced. That's most of the truths. That's most, most truths, most of the bad things, most of the limitations, most of the stories we tell ourselves, we do that intentionally to ourselves to protect ourselves, but in an effort to protect ourselves, we limit ourselves. Now I can tell you, there are times where you will push hard and things will break. I know this for a fact, I've broken my spirit, I've broken my body, I've been extremely poor, by really, really pushing hard. So I know where my limits are. Now this is really cool. Once you know where your limits are, you can gently expand them and not break yourself. But if you don't know where your limits are, it's hard to know if you're going as hard as you can or you are operating within your capacity. And as long as you operate within your capacity, you're not gonna get optimum results. It's like lifting weights. I'll give you an example because you'll, you'll, there's gonna be a lot of power lifting, weight lifting parallels in this because the mind is a muscle. But unlike the muscles in your arm and your legs, your mental muscles can become way stronger than your physical muscles. But similar principles are present. So you're power lifting and then you're on a scheme where you're lifting, squatting, and these are real deals. You're squatting five days a week, but you cannot squat at full capacity five days a week. You, you, you've got to have a program of where you're going as hard as you can, then you decelerate, then you work on this lower level, working within your capacity so you can explode out of your capacity, and they're called cycles. So let's say you're squatting 500, you go through this six week or 12 week cycle where you're adding, you're deloading, you should add 30, 50 pounds on your squat after the cycle. So you work within your capacity because what, what happens is you test yourself so you know where your limit is and you gently work within your limit to push it. And this is, now this is something that most folks don't know. If you are healthy and you have no hormonal problems or physical limitations, that if you got on a good training program and you're an average healthy male in America, in two to three years, you could be deadlifting 400 and some pounds or sooner, or and be squatting the same and almost benching 300 pounds. That is if you're a normal, healthy male that is within your reach using the proper system. Now, when I tell people that, they're like, no, I can't do that. I can't do that. The thing is, once again, that sounds scary. You know, if you weigh 180 pounds and you're like having 400 pounds on your back, that's scary. So you, you won't do that. And you, you hear many people will tell you, don't squat, don't deadlift, protect your back, use a belt. I can deadlift currently probably 600 pounds for one on a good day. I don't use a belt. As a consequence of not using a belt, there's a zap machine that probably January of 2015 that I was using that I struggled on. I can pretty much do the stack now and I haven't directly trained abs. It's because a heavy squatting and heavy deadlifting program will strengthen your core. You cannot squat 500 pounds with a weak core. It's impossible. You would collapse on yourself. So as you go up in pounds, and as you stretch your, you know, gently push against your limits, not only do you strengthen your legs, you strengthen every 
muscle in your body. Now, this is how accepting the truth will strengthen you. You know where you are fucked up in your life. You know this. There is no mystery, no drama, because this is where the ego comes in, where you know perhaps you don't want to accept that. So the ego creates this problem where you're like, mm, I'm not that bad. No, that's too difficult to accept. I had to tell myself I was a very fucked up human being at one point in my life. And it was at a really critical point. I was on the phone with my mother and I was homeless and we were talking and she said, well, you can come home. And at that moment, that is when I became a man. That is when I grew up. I didn't realize it at the time. I knew me. And in that moment, I knew that I had moved back home with my mother. I would probably still have been there until she died. That scared me. It put a lot of fear in me. But I accepted the truth about myself. And I operated from a posture of truth. And I said, no, mom, I'm not coming home. I'm going to figure this out. That is when I became incredibly powerful. Now, many people look at the, the struggle, you know, of going through a few years of living in the boarding house and all the bad things that happen as like, oh, I wouldn't want to do that. I wouldn't trade that experience for the world because I know my limits and I've been tested. I was poor, I was hungry, I needed dental work. I had an opportunity to get into something very illegal, white collar crime, and I didn't do it. And I was hungry and I didn't do it. So I know where my character lies. Even in my darkest hour, even when I really need it, there's just certain things I'm not gonna do. I've been tested. And that's one of the reasons that I am such a motherfucker today because I know who I am. Only by accepting the truth and operating from the truth and fucking your ego will you get to a position where you become so mentally strong that people can't fuck with you. People can't make these little offhanded comments about who you are and it fuck with you because you know who you are. Because you are operating from truth. You're you know, not being seduced by the ego. You're not submitting to the ego. You are submitting to the truth and you're implementing from the truth. Another thing, and this is about me and my business. If you know this, I'm not on Twitter. I do have an Instagram account, which is slowly growing. I invest so much of my time in one place. And you hear this like, well, it's not what you should do. Okay. Uh, what if they kick you off YouTube? Okay, well, I'm going to tell you. I almost got kicked off YouTube. Why? Because I tested and I pushed the limits. I know where the limits are. I know where there are certain topics that can get you kicked off YouTube just like that. Anything that's talking about bashing women, bashing gays. You can bash black folks, you can bash Mexicans. All day long, nothing happens. But if you start messing with homosexual people, you start bashing women, YouTube and Facebook will get rid of your accounts with a quickness. So, but at the same time, you can have porn on Facebook, but you cannot express your opinion about certain things. And what you have to do is go ahead and get your own internet properties, your own place, pretty much what I'm doing with Hustlers Kung Fu Vlogs, where you can be unfiltered. But once again, accepting the truth of who I am, what I want to present, what I want to bring to you, I realized that I shouldn't be in those places because all they would do would um, diminish me, uh, throttle down my reach, and I use Facebook pretty much because there's a bunch of people who like the page and I update the page and that's it. So I'm primarily YouTube uh, and my websites. That's where I'm putting all my time because I have accepted the truth. I didn't go to Facebook and go, oh God, it's unfair that you're doing this to me. I was like, you know what? This is their platform. Build your own. S accepting the truth. Pushing ego to the side. Because you know, at one point I was feeling some kind of way and I had to bring myself back to the abundance principle because I would see people with Facebook groups and it's like, wow, they got all this activity, engagement. And then I started to miss my Facebook group 
But when again, I went back over to the truth, and it's like, okay, how much money did your Facebook group make you? Not that much, if anything. It was a mental money thing. You know, you got attention, you got gratification, but you didn't get cash. So I was like, okay, let them do Facebook, step on your mission, keep going, keep operating from truth, keep operating for what you really know to be effective. And sometimes when you operate from truth and you push your ego to the side, there is a delay in benefit. Another case, using my business. Hey, this is Splendid Cameron. Be sure to get your 14, your 19 free courses. It used to be 14. And I had to consistently put that message out. And here it is, 90 days later, after I first started doing it consistently, I've seen the number of opt-ins on my email list double and triple some days. As I continue to do that and build that into the DNA, I'll get to the point where I'll be opt having 150 and 200 and 300 people opting in every day from that message. But that's got to happen. What has to happen here today is me accepting the truth. It takes time. Me accepting the truth. Capacity is often paid for before it's used. And operating from those principles I know to be true and not being seduced by the ego of going on Facebook and doing some stuff or, or sending out this blast like, hey, y'all, I'm back on Facebook and all, all that stuff. I would get an immediate ego boost, but I would also be off point. I would be off the track. I would be so crazily lost in what I was doing. Now, what you have to understand as you go through this course and this audio book, that you must accept the truth and operate from the truth or you are short, you are delaying your success. So the task for this module is I want you to take a sheet of paper. Don't use your notebook, your phone, use a sheet of paper. I mean tablet, don't use your tablet, a sheet of paper and write down 10 truths about yourself. 10, you can like them, you don't have to like them, but things that are 100% true, you know they're true, now, how would you know if some things are true? People have told you this throughout your whole life and you just didn't want to listen. Uh, people have said certain things. Strangers have said things because that's so evident that's who you are. Write those things down and then implement a plan on how to operate from those truths of who you are to begin building your success.